Well, welcome back again, boys and girls. So um, uh, what I'm holding here is called a plenum, because today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the IP, the steering column, and the HVAC system that's associated with the Tesla Model Y. So the reason that we're standing in front of the car right now is because we've already removed the uh, instrument panel, and the plenum would have been mounted somewhere around here. I'll show you where that connection point is in a few seconds. Down here, though, you're going to see a little sponge thing down at the bottom there. That's, uh, sorry, there'll be a sponge thing that goes through that. I'll show you that in a few minutes as well. But I wanted to start here so you knew that the uh, HVAC system <clears throat> comes from both the outside and the inside, or goes from the outside to the inside. So let's uh, first off show you where the plenum kind of uh, attaches. The plenum goes right in here, and um, you'll see that it's there's a lot of foam here to make sure that when we make the connection we don't see any problems with um, with the uh, 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 ceiling and, and whatnot associated with bringing the air in. So if we look at this right now you can see that the air comes in and is brought in by that squirrel cage fan that's uh, right on the other side there. That squirrel cage fan then distributes or pulls in the air and then it goes through a bunch of different things. Sometimes the heater Sometimes the AC system will switch in, but there's some stuff that we'll show you in a little while that has to do with how this mechanism actually works. So it has little butterflies inside that, uh, that are turned on and off through a little, little linkages, and that's what kind of tells you, or tells this box, whether to feed you with hot air or cold air. So the air, when it's pumped through and after it's heated or cooled, goes through the uh, AC ducts, and you'll see them on both sides. The AC ducts then will feed the uh, <clears throat> feed the uh, um, uh, the distributor that we've got on the top here. This I don't really know what to call this because, quite frankly, it's a little different than everyone else. Because what happens here is there is no none of those little um, AC adapters that you usually see inside of the uh, car that you're probably driving that have little uh, uh, little uh, louvers or vents. And, uh, or a little dial that, uh, that adjusts the, uh, the, uh, the, the flow and the direction. These ones uh, shoot up in the air or give you both AC, or sorry, uh, both, uh, both uh, HVAC to the windshield or to the face, or in the case of uh, your, your, uh, your feet and whatnot, they, they drop through these ducts here. One goes to the back of the car and the other one is going to your, uh, to your feet. We'll talk about those a little later on. But one of the things that uh, people have uh, asked about, oh, let's just pop this out too here. So this right here is the uh, airbag for the passenger side. <clears throat> the, um, the steering column has the airbag for the, uh, for the driver. So let's go and move into um, the, uh, how this thing is mounted. So I've painted a little location point here. Those, uh, those location points have a, uh, a corresponding hole inside the instrument panel. Uh, the instrument panel, when it comes in to the car, it's, it's actually done by one person. And the one person will be uh, usually on the uh, driver's side. <clears throat> and he's going to have um, an assist. Okay, a manual assist. And the manual assist is going to help him bring, it'll be clamped to the IP, and then the one person will bring it up, and then he'll pass it through the uh, usually driver's side door, <coughs> usually like this. And when he swings it and turns it, he'll bring it around. Now the instrument panel will be flat to the floor, and as long as he can find the location point, which is relatively simple, You'll be able to feel it, clunk, and it'll go in. And then once it's inside, then you'll be able to fasten um, a few bolts to hold it in place. And you can see those bolt uh, location points here and here and, uh, and on the other side. Now, these have a little bit of uh, play in them so that the operator can kind of adjust the, um, uh, adjust the location. But they're using a center location, so if we kind of look up here, um, you'll see that there's a slot. 
And when you push it in, this will be telling you where the center line of the car is. And the center line of the car will have a little bolt sticking up. You push it in, and then you bring the bolts in from this side, lock it down, and then tighten this bolt up, and now everything's secured. That's all you really have is the four bolts holding the instrument panel in place. So let's move, uh, let's move on to actually looking at this part right here. It's very difficult to see what's going on, but this is called the cross car beam. And the cross car beam is in essence what is the supporting member for everything inside of the instrument panel. Now, let's look over here. <coughs> this, this is the, uh, this is the cross car beam that, uh, that uh, Tesla had in the Model 3. This is identical to the one that's inside here, and we know that because, um, because of the tag that's right here beside me. And it's called out as the J. Klinger um, uh, uh, module. It's an overmolded piece of aluminum. So you take the piece of aluminum and you put it into a, um, into a mold, and then you shoot the plastic around it, and that's what is basically holding this together. So there's a migration on these types of products that uh, we find kind of interesting. It's, it's counter to what we would normally see in, uh, in most automotive companies. And so I'd like to maybe go through this little, this little uh, time chart here. Okay, so initially the Model S had a stamped steel weldment with a center tube structure, which is pretty much standard for most companies. The next one was the Model X. It had an aluminum uh, weldment and it had stampings and castings um, welded to it or bolted to it. When we got to the Model 3, we were pretty excited. We liked this uh, overmolded type, uh, type of product. And um, it was overmolded with PA6, that's nylon 6, with uh, GF stands for glass filled, 60% glass. The Model Y is exactly the same. Now, we also checked out the height and we found out that um, uh, what they did was they gave you two extra millimeters in headroom um, using the, uh, the risers that are in the other, uh, that, that, that are in the Y, different than the, uh, different than the, um, uh, than the Model 3. This is, when you use this process, this is a significantly lighter cross car beam for the same amount of strength. And it streamlines manufacturing. I don't have any, I don't have any welds. I don't have, I don't have a lot of things that I would have to do outside. So if we look at this, um, we're looking at, um, it's uh, 15 millimeters from the floor. And then if we looked at the, uh, we looked at this one over here, um, we're looking at the uh, looking at the seat frame, this one, and we measured that, and it's coming up at 13, and that's where we've got that two millimeters of extra headroom for you. Not a heck of a lot, but uh, a nice feature anyway. It certainly doesn't make any difference to the build of the car, but we do know that there's lots of things that uh, they wanted to maintain commonality with, and so that's kind of how they've uh, done it. Now, <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to talk about is probably the least interesting. But um, when, you bring the, when you bring the IP into the vehicle, you also bring in the steering column. So here's the steering wheel here. And uh, over here is the column that's attached to the mechanical part of, uh, mechanical part of the steering system. So that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of all we're gonna be talking about here today. Um, the, uh, we've talked about the We've talked about how this thing's mounted. We've talked about uh, the good things that we liked from the Model 3 that, uh, that we found on here. Uh, the IC outlets are pretty much the same as what they were before uh, in the Model 3. Um, all in all, uh, this is very, very common. Uh, very common, I guess, to the Model 3 uh, design. And uh, I think that's gonna be it for, uh, for right now. Um, we're uh, hopefully gonna tear this apart and you'll get a chance to see the HVAC unit in a little more detail in our next, uh, in our next uh, video. So anyway, uh, thanks again for uh, tipping your, uh, your cashiers. And thank you again for tuning in to Monroe Live. Thank you.